Then I'll give you a little bit of uh, a little bit of troubleshooting in terms of the most common problems we have in a GC. So one thing I could point out is, let's say you make an injection and you get nothing, not a single thing. You just get a flat line. What's wrong with my GC? Well, um, it could be anything. It could be your auto sampler. Yeah, that could cause no 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 peaks. It could be the inlet itself. It could be the column. It could be the detector. It could be the data system. Well, it could be anything. So how can we figure out what it is? Well, I'm a big fan of what's called half splitting. How can I cut my GC in half and see it is the problem on the left side or the right side? Well, I can't quite cut it in half, but I could do things like the auto sampler simply lifts off. So if I get no peaks with my auto sampler, take the auto sampler off, make a manual injection and see if you get peaks. If so, then you know you have an auto sampler problem. If not, you say, okay, it's not the auto sampler. It must be something else in the GC. Another cool little trick we have is the output. We can output uh, what's called a test plot. It's an electronic chromatogram, what I call a fake chromatogram in the memory of the GC, and it outputs it to your data system. So that's a way to check, is the data system hooked up properly? So GC has ways to half split, to isolate little parts. Um, I'll give you one other little bonus. The most common cause of problems in GC, hands down, every year, every time we take a survey, the number one answer to problems with the GC is leaky septum. So the septum is uh, a little piece of rubber at the very beginning of the instrument. I'll pull this one out and, uh, so you can take a look at it. And uh, this little piece of rubber is what separates the outside atmosphere from the GC. Uh, it will wear out. We know that. When will it wear out? We're not really sure. We say it's good for about 200 auto sampler injections. So after about 200 injections, this septum begins to leak. And when it leaks, it causes all kinds of odd problems. The one most common problem is it makes your peaks get bigger. I know that sounded backwards. Come take my class, you'll figure out why that's the case. And the, the reason is when you get a leak in the septum, you're not losing sample, but you're losing diluent. You're losing helium. So a leaky septum causes all kinds of problems. So step one of troubleshooting, change your septum. Because you know it's gonna to leak today or tomorrow or the next day, so you might as well change that in step one of troubleshooting. That eliminates a lot of GC problems. The second most common problem in GC is the liner. Inside the, the, the inlet is a glass liner, and uh, we have a little O-ring on the top. This is a Viton O-ring. It's not very elastic, so anytime you change the liner, change the O-ring. And the liner itself, this gets dirty. Anything that is non-volatile, this is where it stays behind. So if your sample is clean in terms of volatility, uh, like gasoline, believe it or not, gasoline is clean. There's nothing in gasoline that does not evaporate. You can make thousands of gasoline injections on this liner and it won't go bad. However, if you do fermentation broths, which we do in our lab, we look for acetic acid. We're good for about 10 injections before this liner is dirty. So most important question, how do I know my liner is dirty? We look at the peak shapes. Peaks should be tall and skinny. If the peaks start to tail, especially active compounds, acids, bases, alcohols, if they tail, then we know we have a dirty liner. So you see funny peaks, you see tailing peaks, you see extra little blips in the baseline from noise, change the liner, uh, change the septum, and chances are those problems will go away. So that's uh, a couple of quick tips in terms of troubleshooting. Of course, if you want an in-depth version of it, come take one of our classes uh, where we spend really the whole five days on troubleshooting because everything we do in the lab, uh, in the classes, is really related to how the instrument works, which is the basis of how do we know what's wrong when it doesn't work. So come by and we'll teach you more troubleshooting. And as always, I wanna hear from you guys. What do you do for troubleshooting? Do you have any cool tricks? Do you have any cool tips that you've learned? Uh, I love to learn new things. So let us know your cool approaches to troubleshooting as well.